What did Greg Sankey get cash wise? And we'll be talking to him next week. And we look forward to that at SEC Media Days. Sankey with some more cash and contract extension. What did he get, Caleb Calhoun? Let's lay it out there and then we'll discuss whether or not he's worth it. So Greg Sankey got a contract extension through 2028. He's in his ninth year as being SEC commissioner and he's 58 years old. Funny enough, I don't think he got any pay raise or anything like that. It's just they extended his contract. Um, I'm trying to pull up the actual report on how much he's making, but I'm having a hard time finding that. I, I guess I, I guess theoretically the SEC doesn't have to disclose that. But yeah, basically he's in there through 2028. And I think personally, Dave, this has to do with more about what he did during COVID. Greg Sankey, and I give him credit for this. Greg Sankey, Greg, Greg Sankey stood firm during COVID and had a season and said, look, these players are healthy. They're not at risk. As long as we take proper precautions, we can get a full season there. And he pulled it off. And I give him a lot of credit for that. I do think it's easier when you're in the SEC versus the Big Ten where the weather's warmer and all the data was out that COVID doesn't travel as much in warm weather as it does in cold weather. But I give him credit for that. But I think he's I think he's riding on that a lot because I think he's made a few – ever since that COVID season ended, he's made quite a few missteps, if I'm going to be honest. Okay, well, we can get into the missteps, but as a whole, I would give him an absolute – crazy positive review on what he's done you you give him credit for the covid season and navigating that that's unprecedented and probably never going to happen again but we haven't even mentioned the word texas and oklahoma because with texas and oklahoma caleb that 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 made them in that cemented the sec into the super conference with the big 10 i think just short of that but they're two because they have to go all the way across the country. I think Sankey's done an absolutely fantastic job sometimes. And I don't want to put words in your mouth. I get the feeling that you think he's just uh, done. Okay. We can talk about what he's done wrong, but we're talking about two reverse windmill slam dunks and getting Texas and Oklahoma and handling COVID. So anything else he's done, not nitpicking, but I think Pell's in comparison to what he's done from a positive perspective you okay reverse windmill slam dunk for covid yes i can't do that with okay getting texas and oklahoma nba reference that's like when people who try to say jerry west is a great gm and they say well he signed Shaq." well who wouldn't have signed Shaq when they were when they were the gm of the lakers at the time and so okay. i mean okay well i see where you're going if they come to you you would sign him but you know roy I kramer and I both agree they came to him I agree, but Roy Kramer was a very conservative uh, commissioner who I think did a good job in putting a BCS together so he could stack teams and not have split champions forever and ever. But I don't know that he would have taken Texas and Oklahoma because I, I interviewed him about the potential for a college football playoff and he hated it. I don't know that he would have done those sorts of things. So while it seems like a slam dunk, we're not that removed about 20 years or so from when the SEC might have been conservative and said, nah, Texas and Oklahoma, you're not for us. Things are going good. That sounds crazy now, right? But I don't I don't know that Kramer would have taken it. College football was different 20 years ago. One, oh, Texas, Texas, would, I think Roy Kramer, if he had stayed commissioner to now, would have understanding the changing landscape of college football. During that time, there were still – during that time for conferences – there was limited amount of national TV exposure. So, I mean, not limited, but it was less than it is now. And so you, you, what you, you, you didn't want to have too many teams at a conference during that time because you wanted to make sure as many of you, a, a high, the highest percentage of your games possible could get nationally televised. And the more teams you have, the harder it is to fill those slots. Well, now with the networks and things like that, and now streaming is coming, there's plenty of national slots to fill so and also i think now brand size matters more so i just think that i just think things have changed a lot it's you know even look mike slive i thought made a great move at the time getting missouri and texas a&m rest in peace mike slive but i think if mike slive were alive in commissioner today i don't think he would have missouri now that was at a time when tv markets mattered 
and I think he wanted the St. Louis and Kansas City markets. I think if he had a choice now, he would think back and go, yeah, maybe I should have added West Virginia, which wanted to be in the SEC at that point. And so I think that. Yeah. So, OK, so we we're, we're, we would agree, right, that since the 90s, let's start at 92 when they added Arkansas and South Carolina, that the SEC has trended upwards the entire time since the early 90s when things started to get. We didn't know that we're getting weird, weird, but you started adding teams. So I think you would agree that it's trended upwards, right? Yeah, it has. Okay. And it's, I mean, it, I think it's a great product, though. I think managing the SEC right now is like being commissioner of the NFL. You don't have to do much to be successful in the I, NFL. I, you, you've said that before. I respectfully disagree because, yes, Texas and Oklahoma came to them. And I, I want you to lay out the, the issues you've had with the Sankey. But first, let's talk about trending upwards you had Roy Kramer, who did not want a playoff to happen, and you had Mike Slive, again, rest in peace, who wanted to play the TV market game, and we've learned in retrospect that's not the right game to play. So those are two pretty significant knocks on those commissioners. I don't see that with Sankey. I don't see a significant knock to the point that they're – any more dire than that now where do you go as far as issues that you've disagreed with Sankey on okay so issues I've disagreed let's start with well to defend Mike Slide when he did the TV market thing you got to remember that was to get the SEC network launched and off the ground and he did that and the SEC network even as markets are changing is still very valuable that's a valuable commodity that's part of the SEC and so I actually give okay, Mike but I don't think it's because of Missouri. I don't th pe think people in St. Louis, that TV market, are like, oh, I got to see Missouri football. No, I don't. It wasn't. But it helped the SEC negotiate a good deal because even though people in St. Louis weren't like that, networks were like that. Because at the time, networks only well, thought, well, TV markets. and so. Okay, but that's like having another kid because you need help with chores around the house. I mean, that, I mean, that to me... Do you see what I'm saying? I mean, I, I, you don't take in... You don't make a major shift to help with a little TV money. But spearheading the SEC network has to count for something. And he did Oh, I agree. I, I think they've all been very good. I and think they've also, all been ace. Roy Kramer made the move, by the way, speaking of getting ahead of the curve, he did the SEC on CBS deal. Roy Kramer, that is the first step that really made the SEC the dominant towering over every other conference in college football, was the SEC was the first to have its own network deal. No other conference had that. And that was Roy Kramer thinking way ahead. And that's, I got to give him credit. Now with, Greg Sankey, I got to say that Sankey, I think he was caught flat-footed getting Texas and Oklahoma. And he had already negotiated his deal with ESPN. And he negotiated a 10-year deal. And then and then the Big Ten goes and adds USC and UCLA, and they negotiate a seven-year deal worth twice as much money. And I'm thinking, and the Big Ten made the risky move of, all right, well, there might be some contract violations when we do this, but we'll hash out the contracts later because we got $7 billion in the pocket, and that's worth it. I actually think that was kind of smart for them. I think the SEC was so mad at – if you remember, the SEC was stuck in a bad deal with CBS that, by the way, is a knock on Mike's life. That was not Greg Sinke's fault. This, this was their most recent contract re-up negotiations 10, 12 years ago. They should have gotten demanded more from CBS, and they were so desperate to get out of that, they just quickly jumped, and ESPN – and they got and they launched with ESPN and ABC. So that was kind of my big issue. My other issue is it didn't seem like he had the troops in line ready to go when it came to scheduling plans. And that really showed in the Destin meetings. OK, so uh, let me ask you this question, because we got to get to the uh, uh, top coach, uh, top jobs in college football. It's easy for me to say a column that's on offthugsports.com. But let me ask you this, um, Caleb, what are your what are your major knocks against Sankey? Those two. I think I think Sankey – I don't think Sankey is forward-thinking in negotiations. I think Sankey is forward-thinking in, in logistics, which is why he was able to pull the COVID thing off. That's the logistic thing. He's very good at hashing out details and, you know, making sure he's on top of everything. I don't think he's forward-thinking in negotiations. And I think okay, that's if my you were decision. to give him an academic grade A to F over his tenure, what would you give him? Right now, I'm going C. It oh was an eight. Okay, eight you, bring in Texas, Oklahoma, you bring in Texas, Oklahoma, and you navigate COVID. 
A for A for COVID. Nothing for Texas, Oklahoma. They fell into his lap. They fell out of the sky into his lap. And there are there are ads. I mean, there are commissioners not that long ago that wouldn't have taken Texas and Oklahoma. And yes, but in a different time, in a different environment of college football, I don't. We don't know that Sankey would have taken Texas and Oklahoma back in two thousand five. It's just a totally different thought. Okay, I would give him an A easy, and I'm I'm close to an A plus, but we can agree to uh, disagree. 